Public health and community safety are always a top of mind when it comes to uh, dealing with issues in the community that sometimes aren't really comfortable to talk about. Dr. John Mark Capondo is the Deputy Medical Health Officer for the Saskatoon Health Region, uh, working through uh, public health, and I've invited him today to talk a little bit about community safety, uh, the program Needle Safe, and other programs that are underway in the Saskatoon. So, Dr. John Mark Capondo, thank you for coming. Oh, hi, Randy. Thank you for inviting me. Good. We'll have a little talk a bit today about uh, some of the uh, programs like Needle Safe, as an example, but uh, maybe tell us how you came to be in the role you're in and a little bit about sure, yourself. Sure. So I'm here as a <clears throat> medical health officer in charge of communicable disease control and uh, protection for the Saskatoon Health Region. And Needle Safe Saskatoon is one of the activities that covers a broad portfolio uh, in terms of disease control and disease surveillance and monitoring. And uh, one of the things about Needle Safe Saskatoon, it, it's an intersectoral partnership where we have health, we have um, fire and protective services, we have representation from the city of Saskatoon, we have representatives from some of the neighborhood uh, business community like Riversdale Bid. Uh, we have all the groups that uh, perform needle exchange services, but we all come together to deal with an issue that is a common public concern for us all, which is, is uh, improperly discarded needles. And the reason why we do this is part of our overall duties in public health is to monitor health status of the population. And um, this is one of the areas where we felt we needed to work collaboratively to address issues that in the past was brought up by the community as a, a need and probably you know, wasn't really well articulated that there's actually a group that um, deals with the issue of retrieval of needles. Uh, those who are able to recognize the big yellow uh, safe disposal boxes that are located at each fire station in the city, we have several. We have 10 more that are dotted in strategic locations all over the city and they're there for people to use to drop their sharps and other needles into those safe disposal boxes. So with some of those, if, uh, if someone is a diabetic, for example, and uh, are taking insulin or, or needles that they're using, can they use those same job boxes too? Yes. So these, these boxes are really stationed for community use. So individuals, so you've identified one need if you're a diabetic, if you have to use medical needles for whatever reason, but this also does include people who use needles for um, addiction type of issues, you are free to use that. The one group that we do discourage from using the safe disposal boxes are businesses, and uh, because what we actually encourage businesses to do, so this includes vet offices or physician's offices or dental offices. Tattoo shops, maybe. And tattoo yeah. shops, is we, as Neil Safe Saskatoon, can work with you to try and help you establish a contract with a biomedical waste disposal company because this is an ongoing cost of doing business. So you need to have an assured and guaranteed way of getting rid of these biomedical shops out of your shop. When they are disposed of, uh, I get the sense that you don't want them to end up in the landfill because there can be issues with personnel who either work on equipment that are used in the landfill and, and so on. So. This is more of a method to, again, community safety and, sure. and again for workers in those environments that handle that. That's a really key message that we publish in our annual Needle Safe newsletter. We are trying to divert the shops out of the normal waste stream because it does cause problems for other municipal workers down the road. And what we try and do is once you dispose it in a safe disposal box, we, the Saskatoon Health Region, actually have contracted a biomedical waste disposal company that comes and <clears throat> discharges all those boxes, takes it to their facility where all this waste is treated. So untreated waste or untreated medical waste should never go directly into a municipal landfill. So it, it is a diversion from the, uh, the common household waste and commercial yes. waste that we would it, see. It is a diversion, and um, what we try to do the, the reason why our safe disposal boxes are big is even if you use needles, so I'll give an example of a diabetic. If you use maybe 20 needles over the course of a month and you need to dispose of them, you have your handy small safe disposal box. That can actually fit 
into the safe disposal box without you having to open it up and pour the needles in. So that's the reason for the large volume. So you can just stick in the whole um, safe disposal box without exposing yourself or anyone else to shops. When, we, when it comes to uh, distribution of needles, I guess, that's where uh, some from the health region and there's other agencies that are interested with that. Uh, how does that happen for people that are in need of uh, uh, clean needles and so on sure. to deal with those addictions? So <clears throat> needle distribution or needle exchange is uh, certainly a, a very sensitive topic in the community, but it is something that we like to talk about because I think the, the, the more we talk about it, there's better understanding and we can engage the community. So one of the things, I'm going to take a little bit of a step back, is addictions, unfortunately, is a reality in our community. In fact, within the health region, we have a whole department that deals with mental health and addictions problems. And people cope with um, some of their mental health challenges, whether it's post-traumatic stress disorder or whether it is um, you know, severe depression in, in different ways. And unfortunately, one of the unhealthy ways of coping leads people down the road of addictions. And what we try to do, particularly in my job as a communicable disease control medical health officer, is we want to support our brothers and sisters in community as they are struggling on this journey of addictions to be safe. Because you use injection drugs, you can still avoid being infected by hepatitis C or HIV, which are pretty serious viral infections. Uh, with HIV, that's a lifelong infection. With hep C, there's treatments now, but they're horrendously expensive. So really trying to support individuals to avoid coming in contact really means they need to have access to clean needles all the time. So there are several agencies, as Ray, uh, Randy uh, described. Saskatoon, in our street health program, we do offer needle exchange services, but we have partner agencies in the community that help us. And how this works is essentially it's an exchange. Um, what we expect is when we provide you with clean needles, you return your dirty needle, needles. And majority of our exchange needles come back in that way. And when I say majority, we're talking about 98 to 99 percent every year, most of the needles we get out come back. In fact, if we combine the work of our programs that offer needle exchange with the work of Needle Safe Saskatoon that does a lot of needle recovery on our behalf, we actually end up bringing in more needles out of the community and out of the environment than all the needles that are exchanged or handed out from our exchange programs. So Needle, needle Safe is actually a plus in terms of cleaning shops out of the environment. And in 2014, from the data that we collected, we estimated that we collected 114, so 14% more needles than the needles that were handed out in exchange programs. So in summary, we try and aim for a one-to-one -one exchange. It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes people bring back more needles than they take out. Sometimes people bring back less. But we don't want people who need needles because of an addiction that's driving their life to expose themselves to danger by going ahead and sharing needles in the community because the cost of getting infected with HIV or Hep C would be a huge cost, particularly for us here in Canada, which is a publicly funded healthcare system. It really makes economic sense to try and support our individuals as they proceed down the journey of treatment and cure so they can get off their addiction, which is the ultimate goal. And that's a, a linkage that your department and others are making with some of the, uh, the people who do have those addictions. And I think that's important to note is that it's a, opening a door for a link to help them along. It's bad enough to have the addiction, but yes. uh, to provide them with clean needles to use as opposed to getting infected over and above that. Sure. In fact, um, many of the individuals we serve, if their lives have spiraled out of control, their only contact with the health services is through our needle safe van. So that's really the, the only, I would say, frequent contact they have with any healthcare provider. But what our van does is we offer first aid services, we offer testing services, and we often, often offer referral services, which is really the key piece, that when you are ready, you've gone through all the stages of change, maybe you've hit rock bottom, but you're ready, you wanna get better control over your life, 
uh, our staff in the van are really the first contact to link you up, to refer you, and even take you to the next level of healthcare services. And we've actually had quite good success. We have clients who've graduated, if I can use that term, off the street health van into service, into addictions treatment, into long-term addictions care, and some who've actually stopped. So it, it, it is a, another way to sort of provide a safety net for people who are really struggling with difficult situations in their lives. So when people do d discover a needle in public, uh, or maybe something is on their front lawn or in a driveway, or maybe they're walking in a, a public square or something of that nature, Miwasan Trail, what should they do? So yeah, when you do encounter a needle in, uh, in community, we have to say that I can understand people are quite distressed. And um, if you're an adult, you know, picking up a needle from the barrel end, not the sharp end, and taking it to one of the safe disposal boxes is, uh, is safe. There is really no risk. We don't want children handling sharps. We don't want people who don't feel comfortable. But one of the services that we offer as Needle Safe Saskatoon is you can call public health services and we will advise you. If you are a business owner and uh, you need these kinds of services, um, depending on the particular business that you operate, say it's an apartment complex, we actually do have uh, landlord kits and we have supplies that we can help assist or we can refer you to businesses that are actually involved in cleaning up biohazardous waste. And if it is a public space like a school, one of our key partners, which is Fire and Protective Services, they patrol um, the public spaces pretty often. So as an additional backup to all that, that is, I've already said, you know, both public health services and one of our partners in community, we do have needle patrollers as well. So when you call the public health number, depending on the scenario that you describe, we have a range of options that we might dispatch to help assist you in that situation. Uh, a really complex problem and not no easy solution, but I think we're doing everything we can in light of uh, all of the situations that we're faced with. I want to thank you and the public health and all of your good work for helping us out with what we're doing in Saskatoon uh, and wish you and the department all the best. Okay, well, thanks, Randy, and uh, thank you for inviting me for today's interview. Great. Okay. Dr. John Marcapondo from the uh, Community Health Unit here at the uh, Saskatoon Health Region. We'll be right back.